Welcome to Business Talk Sister Crack. I'm Becca, and today's podcast episode topic is how to become a property manager. And this one I'm super excited about because I have a guest with me, Rena Freeman. So thanks so much for being with me today. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. So first of all, I want you to tell me what do you do? I do a lot of things. <laughs> um, I would say that um, I could break my job down into two different portions. If we do big picture, I work with tenants on a regular basis on everything that they need when it comes to rent collection or maintenance requests. And then I work with property owners and letting them know details about the property and maintenance requests that come in and any other financials that they need to know. Okay. So let's back that up a little bit (laughs) I want to dig into a lot of that but like why do you do what you do like how'd you get started in it what made you be like yeah this is something that seems like a good fit for me all that kind of stuff the story goes back a little bit um you know my I think it comes down to my vision and how I want to live my life and I'm very service oriented I always want to do something where I'm helping somebody step into their sweet spot whatever that is for 11 years, I did that through education. I was a middle school math teacher, and what? that taught me a lot. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, that is always a reaction I get. Um, middle school, too, the, yeah, the patience you know level. <laughs> they they could, like, bounce back my sarcasm, and I really appreciated that with those middle school kids. Mm. Um, but I moved up to the Iron Range with my husband, and he wanted to start buying real estate. And I was like, you know what, honey? You live your dream. I'm going to keep teaching. And uh, so <laughs> You do you. <laughs> yeah, he was going to flip some houses and realized that the return wasn't as great as he wanted it to be. So we converted that into a long-term rental. So that kind of started with me managing my own properties. Um, we have a couple multifamilies and single families in our portfolio. And I really liked working with tenants. I loved finding new tenants. I loved hearing their stories. I loved helping them move from maybe a not-so-ideal living situation to a better one. And then... As I was doing landlord reference checks, I continued to get the question, do you manage properties? Mm. And so I was like, well, (laughs) I manage my own, but not other people. And after I got enough of those requests, I decided to talk to our attorney to see what I needed to do. Every state has their own regulations on what you need in order to property manage somebody else's property. And in the state of Minnesota, you need your real estate license. Mm -hmm. So this past summer, I went ahead and obtained my real estate license. And I work for Johnson Hometown Realty, which is a brokerage in Hibbing. Mm -hmm. And just as a, a, a shout out, the other, like the whole like branded being your husband part and all of that we just did an episode with brandon uh episode 159 if you're looking for what to look for when buying a multifamily property so you should check that out as well to hear all about the rental side of things and in purchasing um but yeah okay so you decided wow i'm getting a lot of requests for this clearly there's not enough people doing it Mm mm-hmm And so that's kind of where you found out, like, man, I should really start getting into this as well. Um, So how did you decide once once you set up a company um, how you were going to go about curating the properties that you wanted to manage for other people? And was there like a threshold of size, all that kind of stuff? How did you how did you figure out what what you wanted to do? I always feel like that's kind of in flux. So I do want to bot back to you asking when I'm creating my company. So there's, as a real estate agent, I'm an independent contractor with my brokerage. And so I don't really have my own company. I am just contracted with them to provide property management under their umbrella of services. Okay. But there are property management companies out there ran by brokers and that's all they do without any other real estate Mm. involved. So there's, um, two different ways to go about the property management piece. So I just wanted to make sure to clarify, I don't actually have my own company. I'm just independently contracted with Johnson Hometown Realty. Okay, so let me just back up like two steps to that. So we're just gonna keep backing up. Yeah, because I wanna like understand this piece because you said you had like the brokerage part. So you have to have your real estate license, but do you also have to have your brokerage license as well? No, so um, you have to obtain your real estate license to do real estate transactions, whether they're rentals or buying or selling Mm -hmm. properties. Um, Okay. And then in order, I don't hold my real estate license, my broker holds my license. So you, when you get your, pass all of your testing and your classes, then you need to find a brokerage that aligns with 
how you want to perform your business. Got it. And I landed on Johnson Hometown Realty. I really like that they're service oriented. So I approached the broker and asked them if they would be willing to hold my license with the brokerage. Aha. And from what I have done research on, I think in the state of Minnesota, you have to be licensed as a realtor for up to five years before you're even allowed to apply to become your own broker. Close. It's three years. Three. Ooh, and then you that's have way shorter to, than I thought. Yeah. Okay. And then you have to take um, your broker's classes and pass a broker's test. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So just in case you want to go out and start like the whole property manage- management gamut from all the way to the broker level, like you could do it, right? Yeah, you yeah. could do it. You've got some years ahead of you, but you can definitely do it if yeah. that's your passion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then um, you you went with them and then that aspect of like finding those people to manage things for, are you also doing it for Johnson Hometown Realty, like other clients they're referring to you or how does that work? How do you go find your book of business? Honestly, there's not a lot of competition up here when it comes to property <laughs> managers. I have once been called a unicorn, which was wonderful. Because <laughs> somebody was like, I've been looking for you. <laughs> Seriously, that's how it was. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, so I, um, I get most of them right now when I'm doing landlord reference checks. I really am not out there searching for business, although I state that I offer property management services. And if you literally Google property management in Hibbing, Minnesota, I'm one of the only people that are go- that's going to pop up. So um, I think the lack of other property managers, <laughs> but also um, I do a lot of advertising in a bunch of different platforms. So I think I just have a lot of eyes coming towards me and I can be a little bit more picky on the property owners who I wish to manage their properties. Okay, so I have two questions, but the first one I'm gonna go after is what exactly is that landlord background check you're talking about? How do those get referred to you and and what does that exactly mean? Yeah, so when I have um, prospective tenants who wish to rent from me, I always ask for their previous landlords so Uh I can perform background checks on them. Okay. Okay, got it. Mm-hmm. So you call, you're gonna call those previous place people that were renting to them. To yeah, see. so they're current landlords. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay, so then that gives you a warm lead, essentially. Absolutely. Into making a lot more network connections. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then the brokerage helps as well because there's a lot of agents buying and selling real estate. And a lot of those buyers and sellers are investors, some from not in the area, and they're looking for somebody to help with their rental investment. Yeah, no, that that gives you like a good flow of different things. Okay, now my next question is, mm-hmm. you mentioned platforms. So what are they and what? how often are you like advertising there or promoting yourself? So Facebook, um, although it is dead in a lot of places, Facebook is a very popular platform for the Iron Range area in northern Minnesota. So we do a lot of advertising on Facebook. I would say that I am active on there daily when it comes to items that I have on Marketplace. And at least once a week, I'm always up there updating pictures and information on rentals, rent reductions, things like that. Um, I also started getting into Snapchat, posting on my Snap map so that anybody in my area can see the snaps while they're scrolling on it any given day. And I do video tours of my available rentals. Mm. So people can just see like based on location, oh, this is a public whatever happening over here and they click on it and then they can see this apartment is for rent kind of thing. Yes. Yep. Hot dog. That's amazing. (laughs) I'm trying (laughs) over here. (laughs) Well, I suppose that probably gets you in a whole nother demographic market too of people looking. And do you see a lot of like people contact you from that? I would say uh, it's very minimal right now. I think it will pick up because Snapchat, when I'm thinking about the users who are active on the Snap map, they're a lot younger, so they're mm-hmm. just getting into the rental market. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have gotten a couple from that platform. Okay, yeah. yeah. So those are the primary two that you're using right now. Correct. Uh, I do have a property management program that offers syndication services to websites. So when I post an apartment for rent, it will send the information to seven different websites and put it up on there. So I'm on like Zillow and mm-hmm. rent.com and things like that. Oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. What What's the, is it like an app or something? So the property management software, mm-hmm. it's called Buildium. And Buildium is kind of a one-stop shop for property managers. You can collect rent through there, do maintenance requests, all of its 
completely comprehensive when it comes to accounting, collecting money, giving money out to property owners. You can pay vendors through theirs. So it's uh, it's got everything you could need for a Nice. A That's a pretty good tool. Yes. So do you have, did you review multiple tools before deciding that was the one you wanted to use? We had used TurboTenant before. I, um, like I said, I got into this because I wanted to be a very service oriented mm -hmm. and they just started nickel and diming tenants and I didn't feel comfortable with that. Okay. Um, and what I mean by that is charging $55 for an application fee and then charging more money if they wanted to do background checks. And I just didn't feel like that was appropriate. Um, they also, when it came to the services that they were providing, you had to continue to up your subscription in order to get more add-ons, where Buildium was all in one. Mm -hmm. And I just really liked that. Um, they also have an option for property managers to get leads as well. So they have a property management section where you can get leads from owners looking for managers in the area. Hmm. All right. There's a lot. <laughs> there, no, I've learned so much about this in like the the <laughs> 10 minutes we've been talking about it. So I, I think that other people have too. So in general, um, what would you say the most important role is that the property manager plays uh, between the person who owns the property and the renter? What, what do you say is like, this is why you're valuable and it, it's the job that needs to be done? I always tell people I'm the ultimate communication liaison. Like I'm always talking to, uh, I'm always on the phone, I'm always texting or calling, keeping people updated in a timely manner. Um, even though it's not a place where I live, it's where other people are living and that's very important to them. Mm -hmm. So communication is utmost. Uh, when it comes to tenants, I just try to make sure that they're heard and understood and validated um, and that they're comfortable and feel welcome in their living space. So, you know, they want to make it a home just like we own our own homes. Um, they want to make sure their rental is like their home too. When it comes to property owners, man, they are all over the book. <laughs> some, some property owners want to be talked to like every single day. They want to know when a light bulb burns out. And some property owners are like, please don't even call me unless there's a work order over $5,000. Like I just take care of it all. Um, so it just kind of depends on how much the property owner wants to be involved. Okay. And then um, are you going out then to the property, like say if there needs to be like a new pipe installed or something, are you meeting with the contractor and getting all that figured out or how does that work? Or do you have like a maintenance contract already and all that? So we have a list of different vendors that we use. Mm -hmm. And so we have preferred vendors. It's that's probably one of the hardest part about property management is making sure that you can find quality vendors. Now when I say vendors, I mean contractors, plumbers, electricians, mm -hmm. handymen, contractors. Um, it is very hard to find reliable people at a competitive price point who are timely. And so I have a list of people. What happens, like the flow, is that a tenant will reach out to me via text or they can submit the request right on Buildium. After that, I ask some follow-up questions so I can get as much information for a vendor as possible, reach out to the vendor and give them the contact information for the tenant and they line it up from there. So mm -hmm. I don't actually do any of the physical maintenance. Okay. I am subcontracting out everything. So I always tell property owners, I'm your eyes and ears of the property. Okay. So do you ever do like on-site visits then? Like, is it once a year or something that you just check to make sure like nobody's like making art on their walls <laughs> or, or whatever. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do do some, I always do an initial inspection of the property to make sure it's looking awesome. And so I'm inside all of my buildings, I would say at least four to five times a year. So I'm always checking on the shared spaces. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's always something that happens via maintenance. So I ask my vendors, like, if you see something, say something. Um, but I, in my three years of managing my own properties and other people's properties mm -hmm. it's very rare if you do your due diligence in screening tenants that you have someone treat a property poorly okay and so what does that look like like how do you have this process of screening your tenants what are you allowed to do and because i know there's probably some kind of legal regulations on it as well minnesota has a lot of laws protecting prospective tenants and tenants mm -hmm. so if you're looking at a property management know that you're going to have to freshen up on a lot of those laws um, when it comes to screening tenants, you have to have all of your prospective tenant requirements available to people before they apply. 
um, you can only screen one tenant at a time. So you can't mm. go out there and collect five different application fees and process them all at the same time mm -hmm. um, you have to go one at a time mm -hmm. um, that just protects the tenant from getting money taken when it doesn't need to or if the apartment's not really available mm -hmm. so we'll um, make sure the tenants know all their prospective tenant requirements I give them my agency and relationships and real estate transactions which is something legally I have to do as a real estate um, agent and then tour the property I don't typically like people to apply to properties unless they've seen them. Okay. I feel like that's when some issues can occur. Also, I like to get my gut intuition <laughs> when <laughs> someone's coming into a property. Yeah. Um, and then if they like the property, they apply. I make sure that they meet all of the tenant requirements. If they don't meet them, then I will decline. I do employment verification checks, so I'm calling employers, checking their income, making sure they're reliable and then I'll call landlords as well, their current and past landlords. So you're allowed to do that and ask the landlords? You can call a landlord and you can ask them three questions in the state of Minnesota. What was the rent they were paying you? Did they pay rent on time? And did you have any negative interactions with the tenant? But those are the only three questions but that you can ask. Did you have any negative interactions? Yeah, Pretty right. open-ended. <laughs> very, very open-ended, <laughs> absolutely. So that is one yeah. of our prospective tenant requirements is no um, negative feedback from past landlords. Yeah. No, that's um, that's a really good uh, checklist of things to go through, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think that that does mitigate a lot of risk at the beginning to make sure, like, because, you, you, I mean, you don't want to be called in the middle of the night because, you know, somebody started a fire doing something ridiculous. or <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I th it's a lot of work to find um, very quality tenants because you have to go through the checklist and you have to be very systematic about it. Um, but it's worth it in the long mm -hmm. run. Mm hmm. No, absolutely. I remember. Oh, I'll I'll wait till the end. I might tell you a gawk to gawk a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, OK, so um, the next question I have is how do you structure things in terms of managing, like recruiting other people for the properties, like finding those tenants outside of like what you're promoting? And then um, maintaining like, hey, you're up for renewal, like, or whatever on leases and stuff like that to make sure you keep your properties full. So Buildium, again, is fantastic when it comes to keeping track of it because so I currently manage 82 units. Mm. So that's that's a lot of people on a lot of leases, a lot of numbers to keep track of. And it's very organized in Buildium. So the first part is how am I finding tenants mm -hmm. what's really nice is like I said there's not a lot of property managers in the area so I do have a lot of eyes on me already and I already have a lot of contacts the way in which I gather information is I make a post on Facebook and I ask people to fill out a Google form part of that Google form is making sure they meet those prospective tenant requirements because there's a lot of time wasted in showings if you already know they're not going to meet your requirements. Mm, so it's like a pre-screening. Pre-screener. Yeah. Yep. And but that way I also collect their contact information and emails and maybe if they don't meet the requirements for that particular rental because every property owner can have their own requirements. I'm mm, just representing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what they would like me to represent. Um, then I can inform them of another property that's available. And so it's just a nice interconnected web, I would say. Yeah, okay. And so then the second part was, remind me of your second part of your question again? Yeah, so like how do you keep yourself organized? Oh, and like lease renewals? seriously, my brain's not even organized. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, Buildium um, keeps track of when leases are ending. So I like to reach out about two months in advance okay. because you need to think about if maintenance needs to occur, if I need to start marketing, if you have to do showings while people are in there. It's kind of a lengthy process. Um, some property owners like to offer a lease renewal incentive. So I love that. It gives them a reason to stay. That reduces vacancy. It's been working out really well. Some of the updates could be like, I don't know, painting their living room. Or um, I have a new one. I'm calling it the tub revival because they want their tub resurrounded. And so that really helps with vacancies. Um, but yeah, I try to start those about two months in advance so I can get on the ball with all the other things that need to happen before they either terminate or renew. Mm -hmm. And how common is it for you to do like a, um, like when you're evaluating what the rental is at right now versus the market and you need to adjust the price point, like how common is that and how do you approach that with your lease renewals? 
It kind of depends on the property owner, okay. honestly. So every property owner wants something differently. Some property owners are just like, well, at the end of a lease, just raise it $25 and we'll, we'll call it good. So they do a flat rate. Some property owners want me to do a you know, comprehensive market analysis, finding comps in the area, and then get, using a point system to determine the highest comps, lowest comps, finding averages and things like that. Um, some people want to do a percent increase at that time. So it's all um, very dependent on the owner. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. And I'm just like asking you a bunch of questions I didn't send you in advance. So I know. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> Take it all on. <laughs> way, way to be answering yes. on the spot. Good job. Um, okay. So then what, in terms of like resources, what kind of books, what kind of uh, YouTube videos, podcasts, whatever, what are you listening to? that you're like, yeah, this was really helpful to me and this is where I got a lot of good feedback? Mm. I would say that a lot of it first comes down to personality traits. You have a lot of hard conversations on a regular basis with people and it can be a roller coaster of emotions. Um, so for a while there, I was really just listening to podcasts on um, being true to yourself, being confident, you know, sticking your ground. For example, yesterday I handed out two eviction notices, but I also placed a homeless family in a three bedroom apartment and they were jumping for joy. And so you do experience a, experience a lot of highs and lows. Yeah. So it's, I feel like I don't necessarily dig in to one topic. I wait till there's something I want to research and then I start researching it. And whether that's researching through podcasts or Google searches, or I'm in a lot of Facebook communities and researching out that way, or I found that a quote that is near and dear to my heart is rising tides lift ships. And Mm -hmm. I like to surround myself with people who believe that too, because I have other property managers that I can call on a moment's notice and they don't see me as competition. Mm -hmm. They just see it as a, a great relationship where we can lift each other up and so I don't I guess I don't seek books rather than I seek people who I can have a two-way conversation with Mm -hmm. so seeking out other people you can bounce ideas off of all that kind Mm -hmm. of stuff yeah no that's good and um one of the things that I did have a question about just because having your own rental properties and whatever is different than just being a property manager how do you price your time and know what's valuable to you and do you do it like as a full package or is it an hourly rate or how did you decide like this is what I offer to um, others that I'm managing properties for? Mm. Well, I did a little research first okay. because I wanted to, There, like I said, there's no property managers in my area. Mm-hmm. So there's no rates to be competitive with. So I wanted to make sure that I was sensitive to the market that I'm in. Um, I decided to go with a percentage of rent collected Mm, because I felt like um, a percentage would take into consideration any inflation that happens in the future. Like a Mm -hmm. rental five years ago is not the same as a rental now. Yeah. And I didn't want to keep changing my fee structure. Right. right, So I decided to go with a percentage and um, I do have a minimum because there are some rentals out there that are not in the greatest of quality and their rent is very cheap but uh, there's a minimum to the amount of work that I do. So I do have a flat rate for a minimum for some rentals. Um, So that's just for managing properties, Mm -hmm. but I also act, um, I would say there's one part to manage a property and then there's another part to fill a vacancy. And so I consider that as a listing agent. And so I do charge a commission for listing properties and finding quality tenants. Okay. No, that's really smart. Um, I would not have thought of a percentage fee, so that's that's a really good idea. I do want to add, too, that there's a lot of other things to take into consideration. So some property management car- companies do charge for lease renewals. Mm-hmm. Some of them take percentages for late fees, pet fees, parking fees. So if you are considering property management, really do research in property management companies that are around you mm-hmm. to make sure that you are charging enough, but not um, under the market too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's excellent advice. (laughs) I am super excited about that. So how can people find you? So I am mainly on Facebook. It's Rena Freeman dash Johnson Hometown Realty. I'm also on Snapchat at Rena the Realtor. Okay, and is it R-E-N-N-A? It's R-E-N-A. Okay. And then basic Freeman. I missed that at the the beginning. That's okay. okay. One N. (laughs) (laughs) All right, awesome, yeah. 
thank you for being with me today. Mm-hmm. We are going to transition to the gawk portion of this episode. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so you were going to tell me about a time where you had a property where everything that could go wrong did go wrong all at the same time. What, what did that look like? What happened? I feel like everything is an understatement to what happened to this poor property. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Okay, so this actually happened about three weeks ago when we were in, like, the negative 20s. Nice. That's the worst. Good old northern Minnesota. (laughs) Um, So it started with a tenant just texting me and being like, hey, Rena, the the dryer has air code D5. Do you know what that is? And I was like, no, not a problem. I'll just do some research. I'll try to figure it out. And then um, that night... I got a text message from every single tenant on the property and they told me that their heat in the living room wasn't working and it's um it's electric heat so I was like okay you know it sounds like it's a building wide issue I'll go ahead and I'll get get an electrician out there the next day mm-hmm. so this mm-hmm. is where finding quality vendors is really important <laughs> yeah. especially when it's that cold <laughs> right um and then we also had a work order out to continue to winterize um the basement that the tenants called me the next morning and said well rena uh, my water's not working so i was like well there's only one <laughs> one reason that would be it's because your lines froze negative 20 that's not surprising so now um two of my four tenants don't have water their heat isn't working and their dryer's not working so i get um, i get a general contractor out there to assess the water i didn't want to send a plumber out there because it can be really expensive at first and we found out there was a hidden portion of the basement which nobody would have known about <laughs> and everything froze in there so now I'm dealing with, you know, no water. Well, when the general contractor goes out there to find the water issue, there is three inches of sewage in the basement. Oh, like, you guys, this no. does not stop. <laughs> it's just the well, worst. Well, because, yeah, if you don't have the, the sump working and the electricity goes up. Well, it was, I mean, the electricity was on. I, okay, so anyway, there are three <laughs> inches of sewer okay. sewage down there. Oh, um, man. I found out that the main sewer stack is broken. Nice. Okay, so we get the... We get the electricity working, install some thermostats. The dryer, it, the door wasn't latching, so that was an easy fix. And then we um, get a guy out there to clean up all the sewage and a plumber out there to fix the main sewer stack. Well, the cleaner was cleaning up after the main sewer stack was all fixed, mm-hmm. and someone flushed their toilet, and it was leaking out of the wall. Oh, <laughs> so we had to go no. back in there, tear up the wall, get to all the plumbing, and... I haven't heard a peep since. <laughs> so cross my fingers that um, that week, that was a tough week. I bet. But it just shows you that you need to have, like, good communication skills. You're juggling five to six different people going in and out of mm-hmm. property. You're trying to keep tenants happy for as long as you can and trying to keep the property owner in the know of all the money that's going to be spent on their property. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. No, there's a lot to it. And trying to manage all of those expectations of like when am I going to be able to take a shower next or like all that kind of stuff because I mean it's if it's your house it's your house like you 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 have to figure out how you're going to do that you know yeah I know so even um, this poor guy came up from Texas too he was having a hard time <laughs> making 20 so I'm bringing him gallons of water and he's like all I want to do is make apple cider so I was like honey you just got to boil some water on the stove you're fine because he, <laughs> he was thinking he had to I don't know use tap water so Wow. That teacher part of me never leaves. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was so good. Thank you for sharing. That was a good story. <laughs> I don't want to scare y'all away, but. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like probably the worst week. There is reality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for joining me today. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this episode, you should give it a review on whatever platform you are listening on. And I think there's going to be one more building property whatever in this series so you should take a listen to it next week and we'll see you next time